What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with a different kind of tutorial for you today. So one of the things I want to work on as a part of this channel is getting better at my renderings and a part of that is I want to try to take things kind of step by step and uh, see how good I can get with this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a few videos and this is probably going to be a multiple video series about kind of the step by step that I'm using in order to create a render. What I want to see from you guys, especially those of you that are really good at V-Ray and other rendering programs that I want to see suggestions on how I can improve. Hopefully as I improve working on these, I can teach you guys what I'm learning as well. So this is going to be kind of a start to finish um, series of rendering tutorials for V-Ray. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So as a part of this, I'm going to download a model from the 3D warehouse and probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to replace a bunch of the textures and uh, see how, um, how rendering ready we can get it by using assets that we can download. But to start off, I want to give model credit. So this model is the Red Cottage by Paul Wall. You can find this just by searching Red Cottage by Paul Wall in the 3D warehouse. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to download that into our model. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click yes to load this directly into my model and then I'm going to place it right here and so I'll go ahead and erase out my default model but basically what we have is we have a it's actually a really nice model but it has SketchUp materials applied there's no backgrounds or anything like that and so when we start off if we were to open up V-Ray if I was to come in here and open up V-Ray for SketchUp and just do an interactive render just like a real simple interactive render Just with the default settings, you can see how this model looks. And so the model looks fine. I mean, there's not like a big issue with it. It's It's got some shadows. Um, the materials aren't really reacting super strongly with the light or anything like that. But I mean, it's a decent little render. But what we want to do in this series is we want to go in and we want to make our models better. And so one of the things we're going to need to do in order to do that is we're going to need to replace all of the textures. Um, or you could come in here and you could add maps and stuff to the existing SketchUp textures. I like to go ahead and download materials that already have all those maps and other things created so that I don't have to come in here and do that. That's going to make life a lot easier. But probably what I'm going to do in this first video is I'm going to start off and I'm going to explode this model because when you bring something in from the 3D warehouse it comes in as kind of a general component. So if you look, the whole thing is coming in as a component, and the only thing inside, all the faces and stuff are in here, and there's just some doorknobs basically as groups. So I'm gonna stop my interactive render. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna explode this. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring this back to the individual faces. And that works for this particular model because it hasn't been modeled with a whole bunch of groups. Um, and what I'm going to do in this case is I'm gonna group things by material type. So so that way it gets really easy to apply V-Ray materials. And so to start off, we're just going to do this very simply. We're going to start off, we're just going to do this with the roofing material. So, um, and I'm going to go ahead and put all of these doorknob models in a group just so that I can kind of minimize those. But um, I want to go ahead and I want to select all with the same material for the roofing material. I just want to right click and I want to make that a group. And the reason for that is because what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to apply V-Ray materials to this. The first thing you're going to notice when you do that is if you click on the outside of the group, you can see how no texture shows up in the entity info. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to inside this group that I created, I'm just going to do a control A and I'm just going to apply a white material to this for right now because what we want to do is we want to come back in here and we want to apply a V-Ray material to the outside of this model. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to bring in some exterior textures. And so to start off, right now I'm using some textures from Polygon. Dot com. There's a lot of websites where you can download different textures. In this case, I'm, I, I like to use textures from Polygon or other websites where they actually include like the different um, like normal maps to make things look bumpy. So you can see how this looks bumpy because of those normal maps. Um, those maps are all important. Those are things that a 
affect the way that these materials are going to look. And so what we're going to do, and you can get that from wherever you want. Um, there's some free materials that you can download from Polygon. I'll link to them down below as well as a video I did about setting these materials up. But really anywhere where you can download these where they have the maps, that's kind of what we're going to want to do. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my V-Ray Asset Editor and go over to the Materials section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating materials. That's really easy to do when you have a material like the ones from certain websites like Polygon because all you have to do is just add the materials and the maps and everything works out pretty well. So to start off, and I'm not going to walk you through this on every material, but in this case we'll go ahead and walk you through this on the roof material. So, and we're just going to go down and click the button for Add Material generic and basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add all of the uh, maps that come along with that material in here so the diffuse map for example is going to be you're, you're going to click on the little box right here you're going to go into bitmap and that's where you're going to load your material and when you download something from polygon you can come in here and find the different maps and everything else. So in this case, if we were to make this a little bit bigger and we were to look at this, you can see how this has your color map, which is basically your uh, your image that's going to get applied to this face. And then we're going to come in and we're going to apply the reflection map and the glossiness map. And so the reflection map, if I go in and do the same thing, is that's going to be a map that's just going to affect the way that your reflections look. And in this case, what you want is you want to make sure that you invert that texture when you bring that in. And so you can see how that comes in a little bit glossy or a lot glossy for a roof material. That's because we haven't applied the glossiness map yet. And so this doesn't have any information on how this gloss should look. And so what we're going to do is we're going to also apply the glossiness map that comes in here. So you can see how this glossiness map comes in. And when I apply that and I go back, you can see how this isn't really reflecting the sun in the same way anymore. And so what I want to do before we go any further is let's go ahead and apply this material to the roof. So when I apply this material to the roof, the first thing you're going to notice is that it's tiled really bad. And that's because a lot of materials come in and they're not sized properly for SketchUp. SketchUp treats dimensions a little bit different. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the edit section and I'm just going to change the texture tiling from 10 inches to 10 feet. So when I do that, you can see how this shingle material gets a lot bigger. And now, if I was to run an interactive render really quick with this view, you can see that right now when I run an interactive render, this isn't picking up this material. I'm not really 100% sure why, but I do know if you come in here and you right click on this and you go to the end of the U yeah. If you go down to the V-Ray UV tools and select the option for triplanar projection, what that's going to do is that's going to UV map this material to these faces based on V-Ray's settings. So now if you come in here and you look at this roofing material, for example, um, you can see how this texture material is going to be is being applied. But one thing you're going to notice is it's very flat. So if I kind of turn off to the side here, this just looks like a flat face that you slapped a picture on. And that's not necessarily what we want, so we're going to apply a normal map to this material. And I will link to a video that I did about normal maps and displacement maps and how they can make your materials more realistic in the notes down below. But basically, a normal map is going to affect the way that the light bounces off of your material to make it look rougher. So we're just going to go back in. We're going to stop our interactive render. We're going to go down to Maps and you're going to turn on the option for bump or normal mapping. And we're actually going to add a normal map, not a bump map. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click the drop down for normal map. And then you can click on this button and you're just going to go find the normal map in this folder. And again, that may look a little bit different if you got it from another website, but this is what that looks like with a polygon texture. And we're going to go ahead and set this color space to the rendering space linear. And, and so then once we do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to rerun this render again. And so when you do this, the effect you get is very subtle. So this got applied with the bump map. And if I was to zoom in, you can tell with the texture image in here, it doesn't really look all that different, but this texture is rougher and it looks more um, realistic. So if you were to come in here and uncheck the box for your diffuse map, which is where your image is, then you can see 
by looking at this face that those bumps are getting applied on here. And you can adjust the power and the strength of that as well by using either the slider in the bump or the normal section or by entering a value in this box. So if you want this to be more pronounced, you can turn this up. You do have to be a little bit careful to not do this so much that it looks unrealistic. But you can see how now if you zoom in, the light is act actually interacting with these little uh, these little pieces that make up your roof texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. And we're gonna use that for our roof texture for, for right now. We may come in and uh, add something with more of a displacement map because that just looks a little bit more um, realistic than something with just a normal map. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and leave that as is. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna pick out a series of other textures um, that have the same maps and I'm gonna apply them all to this building and then in the next video we're going to talk about starting to uh, do some stuff with our environment and our lighting and seeing what we can generate there so that's where i'm going to wrap up this video leave a comment below let me know if you think this is a good idea if any of this was helpful to you i'm really trying to find the best way to help you with your renderings so i'd love to have that conversation with you in the comments down below if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys